Hey, hello everyone, and most welcome to Forensic Extract. And today we'll be discussing about infanticide. So this is one of the important topic. Infanticide is frequently asked in various examinations as well as it's very important for endurance also. So infanticide is basically uh, usually is committed at the time of or within a few minutes or hours after birth. So it is committed basically during birth and within few minutes few minutes to hours after birth. Now, now the alleged mother should be examined in all cases of infanticide uh, for signs of recent delivery signs of recent delivery and her mental conditions mental conditions now in india there is no distinction between the murder of a newborn infant or that of any other individual. So we don't have any separate law in India. So the uh, murder of a newborn infant is uh, uh, similarly punished as that of any other individual. So now infanticide, infanticide as, as per the Infanticide Act of uh, England. So in England, there is one act that is known as infanticide act of england it defines infanticide as the unlawful destruction of a child it is unlawful destruction of a child under the age of one year so unlawful destruction of a child under the age of one year is uh, defined as infanticide according to infanticide act of England now uh, various definitions related to infanticide uh, first of all we are having a feticide feticide so feticide is killing of any fetus prior to birth so killing fetus prior to birth is known as feticide and filicide filicide is killing of a child by its parents so it is done by parents now something is known as neonaticide so neonaticide is deliberate killing of a child within four weeks of birth so if someone kills a child deliberately within four weeks of birth it is known as neonaticide now what do you mean by steel birth it is commonly confused with that born so stillbirth is basically uh, in which the child is born after 28 weeks of pregnancy so weeks of pregnancy are more than 28 weeks of pregnancy and which did not breathe so there is no breathing or shows any sign of life so there is no breathing no signs of life at any time after being completely born so child is not breathing neither showing any any uh, sign of life at any time after being completely born so after being completely born the child is not showing any breathing or signs of life 
at any time after being completely born or this is still birth but the child was alive in utero but dies during the process of birth so this is important the child was alive in utero but died during the process of birth so it is important so these are various definitions now the stillbirth the incidence of stillbirth is uh, about 5% 5% and it occurs more frequently among illegitimate illegitimate and immature male child in primipara so immature illegitimate male child in primipara are uh, the basically stillborn now uh, the it is commonly seen in obstructed labor due to contracted pelvis so it is seen in obstructed labor in case of contracted pelvis so if pelvis is contracted and there is obstructed labor and it is most frequently associated with still birth now uh, there are various um, signs of prolonged labor will, will be present like signs of prolonged labor uh, like edema and bleeding into the scalp or formation of caput succedaneum that we'll discuss uh, later on caput caput succedaneum formation or uh, severe molding uh, molding of head indicate still birth so severe molding of head these all are findings which which signifies prolonged labor or obstructed labor due to contracted pelvis there will be edema and bleeding into the uh, scalp region there will be caput succedaneum formation molding of head these are the uh, findings which indicates still birth still birth so uh, this is about still birth now the common causes of still birth as we have just discussed like uh, uh, the prematurity prematurity or anoxia various types of anoxia are also associated now birth trauma in various cases birth trauma especially like intracranial hemorrhages uh, are associated with the stillbirth maybe any placental abnormalities abnormality placental abnormalities may be associated toxemia of pregnancy toxemia may be erythroblastosis fetalis this is also associated with stillbirth stillbirth and may be many types of congenital defects so these are the common causes of uh, stillborn baby now the dead birth dead birth so a dead child is one which has died in utero so in utero the child is dead and shows one of the following sign after it completely born so there are various signs like there will be rigor mortis at the time of delivery now the child is macerated macerated if the child is dead in utero the child is macerated and this condition is known as aseptic autolysis because the child remains in utero after death for 3 to 3 to 4 days surrounded with liquor amine but there is no air 
so child is surrounded with liquor uh, but there is no air once air enters then there will be putrefaction so if there is no air and this condition is known as aseptic autolysis or macerated fetus now there are various features of maceration like uh, uh, the macerated fetus will be showing so skin of macerated fetus will be red or brownish pink with peeling and slipping so skin will be peeled off and skin slippage will be seen now this this finding which can be seen within 12 hours of death in intrauterine life skin peeling and slipping is seen in macerated fetus now gas in aorta is also seen within 12 hours and this sign is known as robert sign it is known as robert sign now the surface is slimy blistered desquamated And, and and the body is um, basically flaccid and flattened flattens out when placed on um, on some level surface so body will be flaccid and flattens out when placed on some hard surface or level surface so these are a few of the features and or external appearance or internal appearance in case of macerated fetus now the fetus uh, will be having sweatish odor and large blabs uh, will appear within 24 hours so within 24 hours there will be large blabbing which contains red serous or serosanguineous fluid in these blabs now the epidermis detaches easily and leaves moist grease, uh, greasy areas and the tissues are red due to hemolysis and edema so the red and greasy areas will be seen and tissues are red due to hemolysis now in uh, later on there is a distension of abdomen and serous cavity may contain fluid after 48 hour so after 48 hour there will be distension of abdomen and fluid serous fluid in the various abdominal cavities and later on the bone are flexible and readily detached from the soft parts so these are few findings of macerated fetus now on the after uh, this uh, aseptic autolysis there are various findings which are also seen like in uh, in umbilical cord umbilical cord will be red smooth and soft now uh, the skull bones are separated and the brain has grayish pulpy appearance so there is separation of skull bone skull bones are separated and the brain is grayish red and pulpy appearance it is the appearance of brain now uh, due to this uh, the separation of skull one sign that is frequently asked that is known as 
spalding sign spalding sign it is basically due to loss of alignment so there is a loss of alignment and overriding of bones so there is loss of alignment and overriding of cranial bones uh, due to shrink uh, shrinkage of uh, cerebrum after death of fetus so due to shrinkage there is overriding of skull bones now what happens in early stages only there is a loss of alignment without overriding so in early stages there is only loss of alignment without overriding but later on uh, there is uh, overriding of skull bone is also seen now this sign this spalding sign will develop earlier with vertex presentation than with breeze presentation so it is early in vertex presentation now may be detected within few days or about seven days of death of fetus so within seven days of uh, death of fetus the sign is frequently seen but often takes much longer time even weeks or even two to three weeks so as this is holding sign in which the cranial bones the, uh, these are cranial bones which are uh, overriding each other so this is overriding of uh, cranial bones so this sign is known as uh, the spalding sign and initially there is a, a loss of alignment then later on there is overriding so this is one important sign that is known as spalding sign the fetus is sometimes mummified so mummification can be seen if there is deficient blood supply or scanty liquor or no air enters in uterus then fetus would be mummified now something about viability of the infant so viability viability means the physical ability of a fetus to lead a separate existence apart from its mother so the keyword is separate existence so if an infant uh, or the fetus is able to do separate existence apart from its mother and that is by virtue of certain degree of development so there has to be certain degree of development for separate existence and child is viable after 210 days of intrauterine life or in some cases 180 days is also considered as uh, the period of viability now what do you mean by live birth live birth this is also important live birth uh, that the child shows signs of life when only the part of child was out of mother part of child only the part of child was out of mother then the child showed the signs of life though the child may not have breathed or completely born so it is not necessary to complete birth only part of the child's uh, a child was out of the mother when the child shows on the signs of life now the signs of live birth are uh, there there are different signs of live birth during autopsy uh, so we will discuss in next video so stay tuned and thank you so much and keep on watching we will be covering infanticide soon in coming videos thank you so much